ground control to Christopher. He does these things just to upset me. <laughs> ground control no. to Christopher. Okay. Oh, oh, no. I can't no. do this. We can't. No. Oh, oh, man. I didn't I even get to finish the first line of the song. Because I had to shut you down. Take your protein pill? Put your helmet on? All right, all right, I'll stop. I'll stop. <laughs> I'll stop it. Damn. Damn. How you doing, man? I'm good. How are you? I'm good, man. I'm just, you know, thing got fingers and pies, toes and pies, I, I toes and cupcakes. <laughs> I don't need to hear about your sex life. Stop it. It's weird. It's weird. It's uncomfortable. Yeah, you know, fingering pies and whatnot. Yeah. What's your favorite kind of pie? Apple. I, I like an apple pie. I like all kinds of pie. I don't think there's a pie I don't like. Can you, is there any pie that you don't like? Um, everything that's not apple <laughs> or peach. <laughs> oh, love peach pie. Peach pie is delicious. Lemon pie is a little weird. Lemon yeah. meringue. Nope. I, I literally am a meat and potatoes kind of guy. So you'll eat I a like meat what pie. I like and I don't explore. So you'll eat a meat pie. Well, who doesn't like pot pies? <laughs> I thought you were going to say who doesn't going. like a meat I know where pie. You're going. <laughs> I know. And I'm not, I will not be suckered into your bullshit. <laughs> What's, What's up, up Robbie? Robbie? <laughs> oh, oh Jake, you owe me a Coke. What's up, Robbie Bloodshed? <laughs> Robbie and I, we um, last weekend we we did uh, we're we're doing this little show. In Lodi, it was a lot of fun. We had a we had a good time. Hey, Robbie, loved your uh, loved your feline nursery. That was fucking cool, right? Wasn't that cool? That was a good time. I'm waiting for the I'm waiting for the seven inch. I better get one signed. Oh, funny, funny you should say that. Funny you should say that. Oh, really? Um, but yeah, no, it was a good it was a good cover. It was a good cover. It's uh, not it, a cover if the song doesn't exist. It's an original. It's yeah. a take on. It's not a interesting. Cover. Interesting you say that. That's yeah. like yeah. yeah. Um so what are we talking about? We're talking about space horror. Amber likes French onion soup. Amber Hale. Yeah. And that is meringue. Yeah, no, I saw that. I, I didn't know I didn't I I didn't understand what soup and lemon meringue have to do with each other. I didn't get it. She just she like she's letting us know that she likes. Oh, too. fair enough. Come on, it's a Danzig reference. Oh, I assume. And if I not, didn't even th I didn't even put two. That's how slow I am. I I didn't even put two and two together like that. I'm like, is there such thing as French onion pie? That's freaking weird, dude. That's you got the wrong. You have the wrong frame on here. What do you mean? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me let me switch that. Like this? You like it like that? No, the wrong frame. It says Jeff Rumis. Oh shit! Hold on, I could fix that in two seconds. We're so so rare and a go. We forgot to change the frame. That's super simple to fix. He says we. It's all him. It's we. We do declare. So let's talk about space war. You want you want to start this off, or should I start this off? Um, you started off. It's your topic. Okay. Um, space horror. It's a very broad sort of horror. You know, there's a lot of different types of space horror. I mean, alien horror automatically fits into space horror because extraterrestrial, like all that stuff comes from space and it's a horrifying sort of element. So that's also going to play into space horror. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, but so if you're, if you're not talking about aliens, then basically you're probably dealing with like uh, people on a marooned planet or in a maroon, like marooned on a spaceship or something. Or it's like uh, it's essentially everything that, you know, if the movie was taking place on the in the 1800s on a ship going across the ocean, the same sort of conflicts would be happening in outer space. Same sort of you could plug one conflict into the other. It's just in outer space. You know what I mean? So in a way, it's kind of like these timeless sort of uh, tropes that you will find in space horror and outer space films. What do you think of that? Fair. Now, yeah. Rob is asking, would killer clowns from outer space count? 
Oh, totally counts as space horror, duh, because they come from outer space. It would also be considered circus horror or clown horror as well. And I love that sure. movie. That's a great, that's a really fun movie. I wish we got, what's going on, Amy? Um, hey, Amy. I, I wish that we got, um, I wish we got that sequel or that Netflix show and it never came. Never friggin' came, dude. I want it. I want it, but it never came. So probably the most famous space horror film of all time is going to be Alien. Of course. Right? Yeah. What's going on, Ooh. Josh? Right hiss with fire in the sky. Yeah, I was going to bring that nice. one up. Nice. Fucking one of the most terrifying. You know what's funny about fire in the sky? It's one of the most terrifying non-horror horror films out there like you don't think of it as a horror film or a sci-fi film really it's just more of like uh i don't know in a weird kind of way not true crime but like what's like the equivalent of like a true story being dramatized that's more of it's the dramatization dramatization yeah. i guess yeah absolutely you know i you know amy i expect just i have to throw this out now i expect amy to pull some like serious stuff out of left field because she's good at that she is good at that i i agree um, she knows her stuff. We might have to have her be a guest. Um, we so so the probably the greatest space movie of all time or horror space movie is going to be Alien because not only does it cover it covers three sort of bases, right? One yeah. we've talked about this. It's a haunted house film in outer space. You know, number two, you've got the alien, the xenomorph action going on. You know, and number three, you have conflict within the crew and corporate like corporate kind of greed. Like you could make a movie about any which one of those things. But Alien has all three. So in a way, Alien is kind of like the 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 base template for all of those things, you know, from which all things spring forth in that kind of way. What do you think? Yeah, I would say so. Yeah. Uh, I like what Aaron says here. He says, outer space is more scary. The whole feeling of claustrophobia, there's nowhere to run and you can't go outside. Yeah, I mean, it's true. You're trapped in a you're trapped in a tin can. You're floating you're floating around in a tin can far above the the world. Planet Earth is blue and there's nothing else to do, you know? And <laughs> and that's it. Um He's rhyming. No, I'm not. I'm saying a David Bowie song. But um still rhyming. Another another really great um recent space film. I would even say The Blob is a space film. The Blob remake from 88, you could consider a space film. It's a terror that comes from outer space. Even though the outer space element's only in one part, it's still an extra sort of terrestrial thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, I get you. Um Life was a really good space uh, space horror film that came out recently. I really enjoyed Life a lot. I don't know if you saw Life. Bought it, never watched it, still sitting there, probably still shrink wrapped. Oh, I'll man, you really need to check it out. It's really, really great. Oh, wait, Amy brought up, you know, obviously Aliens, Alien and Aliens. We're going to yeah. talk about those because... Well, we're gonna talk about this. <laughs> well, we have to. There's like it's it's kind of unavoidable. Well, alien is alien is alien. Alien is alien, and aliens is aliens. Mm. But then you have a film like Galaxy of Terror, Roger Corman. Wow, film. why do we have to go there? Uh, because it's like you know, because that's the thing about Alien is that it started to spawn every type of every type of outer space film can really trace its roots roots back to Alien, which in turn can trace its roots back to Planet of the Vampires, you know, right? Mario ooh. Baba. And right, ooh, right. <laughs> Howard the Duck. You know Josh, what? You know what yeah, we'll count it. Say yes. Yeah, I'm going to count it. I, I count it as well, Josh. I, I, I think it is absolutely a... Um, uh, a horror film you with between I think that Josh Josh wins the night with that <laughs> Jeffrey Jones man Jeffrey Jones is freaky yeah. deaky in that movie um so yeah usually have and then 
you know, you have these aspects of, I personally, I love, I mean, I love films that have aliens in them, but I love space horror when it really is just man against man in a really shitty, crappy situation. Yeah, Night of the Creeps, automatically, anything that comes from outer space would count, I would think, right? You're automatically got to count Night of the Creeps, some Tom Atkins action up in there you know S super super staple we were talking and then you know i saw robbie brought this up before and this is what i <laughs> this is this was sort of a game i wanted to challenge chris to so we have leprechaun 4 which if you have not seen leprechaun 4 this is like this is the oh it's so freaking great it is really bonkers yeah venom too huh um Leprechaun 4, it's just like, it's one of those films like you can't believe that it was actually made. Like, this film actually exists. It does feature space marines, kind of like aliens, and it has an alien leprechaun in it, played by Warwick Davis, who not only plays the terrestrial Earth leprechaun, but also happens to play, like, there's no explanation for why this leprechaun is in outer space. And you also have Miguel Nunez, who played spider and that other guy with the enchiladas and Jason, he's isn't in. He the, isn't he the photographer who runs Seventh House? Who? Oh no, that's Maurice Nunez. Never mind. No, Miguel. Like I'm confused. Oh, you got you got you're confused, dude. You are confused. Um, he uh, no, no, no. He he plays Spider. You know who he is. I do. You know who he is. He plays Spider in Return of the Living Dead, and. He's in Leprechaun 4, and that is, like, it, it is really a bananas film. At one point, the Leprechaun grows to gargantuan proportions. And I'd say the other franchise that goes to outer space and does it better than any other franchise is Jason. I think my favorite Friday the 13th is Jason X. What the fuck is wrong with you? Oh, it's hands down the best Jason film. Hands down, besides Part 6. Part 6 and Jason X really 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 great oh yeah 10 cloverfield why, lane is great why do you test me dude with your madness. think about it it's like I jason don't, I don't need to think about you it. do need to think no. about it let's look at the plot of jason x it's the it's hundreds of years into the future earth is no longer habitable they i think this was like the final throws of like dimension when it was like at its like height isn't it a dimension film or is I it new so. line you know what i don't even know I think it's Dimension, but I'm not sure. It's Jason killing people up in space and having sex instead of killing people down here. Yeah, but he has na sex. he has like he has like nanite technology that rebuilds Jason and makes him a better killing machine. And you know, they yeah, like Earth has been abandoned. They go down to Earth, down to Crystal Lake, these these like archaeologists, they they thaw out Jason. Jason gets revitalized and becomes yeah. The look, Ballad says it's the 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 liquid nitrogen kill is awesome. They they um uh with that that geeky it's guy. Okay. It's, it's okay. A, it is really really fun. But here here's here is my challenge to Chris. Let us take. I have two franchises that I want to that I want to pitch. I have I have good pitches for okay. for space sequels to these two franchises. But let. First one is A Nightmare on Elm Street in Space. I would call it A Nightmare in Space, right? Here's how it's going to go. In in all these outer space films, you have you have the um hibernation chamber, right? The hypersleep tube. So what happens is a bunch of people they go into the, they're in outer space, they're traveling at light speed, they go into the hypersleep tube and one by one, in their sleep, they start getting knocked off by Freddy Krueger. Okay. Now, but here's the big question, Chris, and this is what I want to, and we'll ask the audience as well. I'm not sure. Is it, is Jay, is Freddy tied to planet Earth? Like, can you have Freddy in outer space? Does it make sense? Do his powers of the dream world extend beyond the earthly realm? It has to because all if they all come from just people dreaming, so it really doesn't matter. Okay. Um, in any case, they now are racing against time. They have to decide. They're all the the whole movie takes place while they're sleeping. Okay, they're 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 sleeping and they 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 have this like communal virtual reality sleep 
neural net that allows them to interact with each other in their dreams. And one by one, they're getting knocked off and they all have to decide to team up together to try and knock Freddy out of maybe he's maybe he's haunting the 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 hyperspace machine that that causes them to sleep and they have to he's like a virus and they have to kick him out of the machine in order to save themselves because they can't wake up because they're traveling between planets it's like light years like if they wake up they're fucked so they have to they have to uh remain asleep while battling freddy and kicking him out of the spaceship what do you think you know what I'm going to say. What are you going to say? Uh, no. Okay, how would you do it? What would you I wouldn't do tweet? I wouldn't do anything in space, but I told you that I would come up with something. Okay. So, yeah. Jaws in space. Ah! <laughs> living Oh my god. Living in the tail of a comet. Okay. Because it's gaseous. So, okay. Flying by a space station. It keeps fucking with the space station. Who's aboard? Descendants of? The Brodies. Not just Brody. If you're going to do something stupid, go full <laughs> tilt. Brodies. <laughs> Hoopers. Quints. Oh, my God. Who don't know each each other until they start doing research in, you know, in their middle, second act, going into the third act and realize there's a connection between them. Or their families and this fucking shark. I love Quint that. Quint of course is in charge of the station. I I love that so much. I think that's incredibly creative and I fully I green light it. That's what we should say on the show from now on when you want to endorse someone's pitch or someone's take on something. I green light that. That's my <laughs> validation of oh what my. you just said. It's it's good. That's good. How about this? <laughs> how about this? How about Ballad supports it. How about what? How about yeah, John Carpenter's Ghosts of Mars. That is a really goofy movie. Really goofy fun. Um yeah, Invasion of the Body Snatchers for sure. Okay, here's mine. Ready? Here's one more. Ready. Chucky okay. in space. Chucky in space. How does it happen? The spirit of Charles Lee Ray winds up in a some sort of um a mars rover that looks like a little chucky doll like it's not exactly chucky it's like a it's like a it's like a small sort of doll like robot apparatus that astronauts on mars use to like mine for rocks uh chucky you know just like in part two going into part three like his whatever is melted goo finds its way into the circuits of this of this uh martian rover doll and then the martian rover doll which they think is just you know not sentient is knocking off uh martian martian astronauts one by one and chucky obviously is trying to find his way into uh the the body of someone but how about instead of this time as it turns out um one of the astronauts is pregnant i know it's like typically you don't see that you get uh yeah exactly daniel's got it like wally chucky, chucky. Oh right my. i love that i love that fuck yeah and so chuck e that's what you would call it it would be called chuck e and um th this pregnant astronaut uh chuck e is trying to possess the fetus he wants to possess the fetus so that he could be born anew in in the new flesh. All hail the new flesh. So new that's flesh. What, that's what. Do you wow. green light it? Do you green light it? Come for on. you, sure. For you, All right. sure. Cool. Yeah, yeah. I, I I agree. We do have to talk about the thing for sure. Absolutely. And you know, speaking of the thing, I I talked about this with Chris privately one day. I rewatched that prequel, the thing prequel, and you know when it came out. I was I hated it. It was really like panned in general. But upon rewatching it, apart from the bad CGI that has not aged well, it actually is a pretty friggin' good little prequel. And you that's know? why I tell you, fuck critics. 
because they t- these are the same people. Okay, short tangent, but yeah. these are the same people going around today saying Halloween Kills is a failure, even though it's made a hundred, almost a hundred and thirty million dollars so far on a twenty million dollar budget. In no place in the world is that a fucking failure. So stop with your with your bullshit. I won't I didn't use even know the that. phrase, but just stop with your bullshit. <laughs> Yeah, every, everywhere you go, it's a failure, you know, terrible, blah, blah, blah. It hmm. didn't deliver. It's like, it delivered enough. It hmm. made a shitload of fucking money Listen, and will continue to make more. I will say this. They said that, you know, the movie is called Halloween Kills and people died. A whole Can't lot of them. deny that. Really hardcore on you Halloween. Can, <laughs> yeah. There you go. You cannot so, deny that. Ooh, space Sharknado. Oh, my. <laughs> my yeah, because you have space tornadoes. <laughs> you have space tornadoes that... Space that, Sharknado. No, you have a space tornado that touches down on planet Earth and then... And sque- space sweep, sharks. Yeah, sweeps up a bunch of sharks that then are basically getting seeded throughout the rest of the upper atmosphere and landing. So basically these these sharks are are, are kind of like they're almost like little warheads that touch down and you uh need what's his face with the with the chainsaw to uh oh sort of stop this from happening steve yeah 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 steve he's from steve. Um, he's 90210 steve. yeah i don't care what he thinks he's doing he's steve who has who is a franchise that we can turn into a space franchise yeah, what's another horror franchise that needs a space sequel it that needs we have a space gotten? sequel? Yeah, that's what I want. I mean, uh, uh, Hellraiser, which I did not see this one. I know there's one in space already, so that doesn't And that one's, that one's cool. Is it? I think it's Oh, fuck cool. yeah. Evil Dead in space? Of course there would be. Oh, um, my God. Can you imagine Ash in space? It would be Planet of the Nomicon. That w- it would be the Planet of Nomicon. <laughs> that's what it would be. Like... Touchdown. They, they, okay, so Ash touches down with some other astronauts. They find the Necronomicon on Mars, and it basically turns into Ghosts of Mars. Ghosts of Mars is basically Evil Dead on Mars. What is the first right? space horror film? No, Rob, Robbie's in it with Teenagers from Outer Space. What year was Teenagers from Outer Space? In the 50s, sometime in the 50s. And Planet of the Vampires? Uh, in 63 was playing the vampires yeah but i don't think you i wouldn't call teenagers from outer space a horror film at all it's a it's a sci-fi i mean it's just like a sci-fi b movie what's 1959 ballad oh well the blob the blob well we don't know where the blob comes from in the original 58 version so I don't know. They they never tell you that you only it, it comes from outer space in the nineteen eighty eight sequel, but not in the original not in the original fifties version. Holy crap though, I'm trying to think I'm hmm. I'm pretty sure that Ghosts of Mars is essentially Evil Dead in outer space. It kind of is. Like not not exactly, but pretty darn close. Yes, the faculty for sure. Yeah, for sure. I would call right. that space horror. I mean, are we conflating? Here's the thing, guys. Are we conflating? Are, are are we confusing alien horror with space horror? I feel like aliens come from outer space. Therefore, that makes it space horror. Like you would put an alien so, horror film. Thing. Yeah, I feel like that would that all gets lumped together. It's OK. I, I feel like it it's acceptable or we can say space horror or alien horror. Um, I guess uh, what? How do you pronounce it? Extro? Oh my the extra, god! The extra series That's without warning, um, the brain, which I haven't well. seen, but I know that that is for sure would would fall into that category. Oh, critters! Yeah, yeah. definitely critters, definitely. man. That's a really fun series. Really critters fun. Critters in space. Yeah, Critters in Space, the fourth one. Although, oh, you want to know what's funny about Critters is that even though the fourth one is in outer space, like the whole series is very space oriented, even all the way going back to the first one because it had bounty hunters and intergalactic bounty hunters in it. You know, 
All right, Daniel's saying some really cool shit right here. He's saying, I heard that Ghosts of Mars was originally supposed to be Escape from Mars with Kurt Russell as Snake Plissken. I what year so, was that? 2001. I so hope that's true. It's possible because what happened was Deborah Hill was in charge of the whole Snake Plissken franchise, right? Right. Um, they came out with the with the comic series. They, mm-hmm. you know, you got the special edition DVD. Yep, I have and that. They were gearing up for novels. That there was a big push happening. Escape from Earth. And then it just well, she died, and mm-hmm. when she died, everything stopped. They live. And so it's possible they yeah. live. Yep. I, you know, that's a movie that we never got the sequel to. Like where, they live? like. Yeah, like, I want to see where they come from. You know what I mean? Like, I wanted to they see that with, planet. Well, They Live was a failure, so. Hence I know, it's a sequel. shame. It, yeah, but, I mean, it had it had legs. You know, it's a cult classic. It, I think it's worthy of a sequel at this point. Yeah, Slither, I mean, Slither is essentially, Slither is essentially a, what's it called? Um, like a, a sort of reimagining of, of Night of the Creeps. Are very similar yeah. they share spiritual i would say they're spiritual companion films to one another um of course pitch black which we've discussed on the show um but is a really great example of space horror P- perfect example of space horror because it's not just it's and it's it follows that same sort of formula that alien does where it's not just oh uh you know inhabitants of a ship versus an alien it's people versus people it's people versus nature and it's people versus monster all at the same time you know what i mean okay, yeah like you have all these obstacles not only are they concerned about these flesh-eating creatures they're also worried about reddick who's a convict and they also have to cross you know this harsh terrain to get to a ship that could possibly get them off the 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 rock that they're on what's going on crazy white boy um plan nine from mars i never heard of that one plan nine you know plan nine from really space. is amy pulling out something that i've never heard of i've all, never heard ever? of it i have never heard of it we have questions amy please we do elaborate um and we've talked about of course the the alien versus aliens and how you can't one is not better than the other they're two completely different films with two completely different tones. As a matter of fact, our first conversation on a podcast was was had this in the discussion. We ultimately and how I said that Aliens is not a very good movie overall. <laughs> Did you say that? Yeah. Well, here's here's my thing for anybody who missed it. It's not that I don't like aliens. Of course I do. I'm not a fucking moron. However, Alien is about the alien and how deadly it is. It's fucking nine feet tall, and this one thing can destroy everything. We have an entire fucking whatever building station filled with them, and we're able to take them out with, you know, firepower and a fucking robot. I mean, let's face it. What Aliens is is James Cameron going, ooh, bigger, bigger, bigger. For three fucking hours. It takes him three hours and less subtlety to do what Ridley Scott did in two. But but we also discussed how it continues um, that it carries some deep themes in it and continues uh, what is sort of explored in Alien with the mother theme and how they... You thought that was deep. I don't disagree with you. No, you thought that I was deep too. Well, Go back, I, play the tape again. You were blown away to, by that. I'll have to, I was not blown away. You were impressed. You yes, I, I forgot your words. I forgot your words, but well, you were. We're going to have to go back to that because <laughs> we you know will. What it is? That's the dad in you talking. No, I'm not say, again, not saying it's not good. It's just For, alien let me, is five times better. Let me let me repeat what I what I said on that first episode was this. I'll keep okay. it very short and brief. Basically, you know, we go from this theme of, you know, there's a lot of themes prevalent in the original Alien, including that of R.A.P.E. and stuff like that. And this idea that here's this computer called Mother 
that's basically letting you know its children that it takes care of on the ship in hypersleep or whatever uh okay. fall prey to this this creature that has a giant you know penis that comes out of its mouth and like punches a hole in you you know what i mean so it's very yeah. sort of like phallic and freudian and whatnot and then aliens sort of flips that on its head with varying themes on motherhood from the aliens they show that the aliens themselves have a mother that is the queen and ripley uh we learn that she was a mother and that her daughter died while she was frozen for 57 years and then she adopts newt and becomes a mother again and has to rescue uh, her newly adopted daughter from the aliens and faces off mother against mother, get away from her, you bitch, you know? And so you have this whole sort of like theme of motherhood from all these different aspects. And so I really think they are perfect. They're, they're almost perfectly complementing each other, except alien doesn't know that it's a complimentary film while aliens does because alien came first and is not aware of where the story is going to go. But James Cameron is fully aware of the original film. And therefore, as you know, Chris said, bigger, everything's bigger, everything's expanded. Everything is sort of uh, fleshed out. Hey, where did the aliens come from? Oh, queen alien of course which is you know probably the most brilliant use of bigger i could think of so you know <laughs> oh, okay um color out of space oh yeah dark skies yeah man that was really good that's with uh julian what's her face the redhead um she's in boogie nights what's her name julianne, julianne moore, moore. Yeah. yeah, I think that's with Julianne Moore and like she has like a kid and then I don't want to say the twist because it's a really good twist if you have not I seen it. I didn't see it. Oh, great twist. Um, Color Out of Space, you know, I wanted to like this so bad. It has all the things that I love. I love H.P. Lovecraft. I love Nicolas Cage. I love Magenta. But like I just, it did not, it did not land the, um, it, it didn't land for me at all. <coughs> What did you think of Color Out of Space? Didn't watch it. I don't. I don't think you need to, to be honest. I I don't either. I would have watched it by now. <laughs> I just don't think. Um, I, I I don't think it. You know, it was supposed to be the great return of Richard Stanley. Um and yeah, <sighs> was no. not. Dude, yeah. hardware, just hardware. Hardware is great. Just I hardware. like hardware too. I like hardware. That's, I'm glad that's you know the only Richard Stanley. Oh, well, of course, I saw it in a fucking theater. For Christ's sakes, that's what? the only Richard Stanley movie you need. Yeah, Dust Devil is not good. No, it's not. And um, I don't know. We we can't judge I Live Doctor Moreau because it never happened, really. So I like the one that we got. <laughs> why? Oh my god! This is it's why we really good. so much because he's out of his fucking mind. No, no it's, it's not really, really good. good. It is really good. It's really good. Yes, yeah, Starman, John Carpenter, Starman. Fire in the Sky is not off topic. Josh from RiotStickers dot com uh, brought that up, why? and be no, I'm saying it's not off topic because yeah, it's but why would you say who said it was? No, 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 no. Oh, this guy oh, oh. Buzz is saying that it is, and I'm saying oh. no. Oh, okay. No, it's fire in the sky. Is we got somebody watching from Guana, West Africa. Precisely Dabala. What's up, Christian? Thanks for joining us from West Africa. Um, you got any favorite space horror films you want to drop on us? Um, alien abduction incident at lake county oh 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 Ooh. all right game hold on a second game of thrones girl with the red hair what's her name um who plays ingrid yeah she's wait, in ingrid? that movie you know what i'm talking about that movie no yes you do with the no, oh it's I called don't. honeymoon honeymoon Oh, oh, that girl. Well, you say red hair. I'm thinking of what's her face. Yeah, I've seen Honeymoon. Honeymoon was, was pretty good. Oh, I thought it was really good. Really good alien film. It didn't make me sick. I enjoyed it. I thought it was. I thought. Yes. Oh, my God. Species. Of course. How could we be forgetting about species? A great example from the 90s. And I'll tell you, 
Talk about going bigger in the best kind of way. Species does it really well. Species 2, it's like, where do you go? Where do you go with species, right? Like, how do you expand on that? Well, you have another astronaut go. It's essentially the origin story of Venom. You have another astronaut go to Mars, picks up uh, an alien and becomes the, the male version of her. And then they have to keep them from fucking because the brood would just destroy everybody. Gr love Species 2. Big fan. Species is good too, but Species 2 is great. Get some Michael Madsen action in there and whatnot. A lot of good, lot of good picks here, guys. A lot of good picks here. I'm trying to see what else. Of, oh, of course, um, Signs. You know, here's what I don't understand about Signs, which has a great that when they pause the um tv on the alien on the on the in brazil you know what i'm talking about yeah yeah that is a that is really really freaky deaky and also yeah. you see the hand out of the door i mean that makes you that really makes you you jump right um but here's what i don't understand why would these aliens invade a planet that's covered in water if it's their big weakness they have the technology to travel to planet Earth, but they didn't bring suits that could keep them away from water. Does the humidity not hurt them in the atmosphere? Like I did not. I just too big of a too big of a thing to 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 ignore for me. You're over, you're overthinking it as you. I no. You're I don't know. That is so egregious. It's not to be believed. It's not to be believed. Um, but, you know, signs, man. Signs. I'll, I'll I'll buy that for a dollar. Overall, it's a good film. It's got a nice emotional core to it. It was filmed in Daniel's, practically filmed yeah. in his backyard. No, I have not seen, I have not, I'm not going to even read this comment because I have not seen a AHS double feature yet. I'm very excited. I just finished the anthology. I've been catching up on TV shows. I'm watching uh, What We Do in Shadows. I just finished You. Um, and I'm watching... Uh, I watched the anthology, the American Horror Story anthology, or American Horror Stories. Um, but I have not seen the new season yet. Uh, I will at some point. Um, yes, yeah, Supernova. Wow, with James Spader and Angela Bassett from 1999. That's a fun wow. one. Haven't that's thought about that. Too. Haven't thought about that in a long time. Wow, that's a good one. I've never seen it. I just like the fact that somebody brought it up because nobody talks about that movie. It's good. It was. I've good. never seen it. So yeah, it's got an interesting. But I do. Movie. I do appreciate. I do appreciate. You like deep cuts, I, man? That was a magical. The 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 late nineties, early two thousands was a magical time for all sorts of films in general and. Definitely got some interesting stuff. I wish that we could talk about Galaxy Quest, but it's not, I wouldn't, it's obviously it's not horror. However, I would love to see the horror version of Galaxy Quest. That would be interesting. Imagine that. Hmm. That could be cool. I think that would be cool. Yes, the Giver, the Giver wow. is a space movie with Mark Hamill. Never watched it because I, I watched the anime, so I didn't want to see a live action. But yes, I remember Mark Hamill was in that. I would, you know, Ballad, I, that's really stretching it. I would not count The Mist, personally. They're interdimensional. I wouldn't count it as space horror, per se, though. It, it's not, it doesn't, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to allow it. I'm not going to allow it. I mean, it's a great film. I know that Ballad loves The Mist. He was, when he came on the show that one time, popped his head in. He's talking about how much he loved the mist, but I wouldn't call it. Um, I wouldn't call it space horror. It's filmed in and around various towns in Bucks County. The house is built on a campus. Oh, you have War of the Worlds, right? Yeah. The Spielberg version, which is right. What you don't like that one? No, I don't. I really liked it, and I was horrified by. You know, I never really thought in my head. I said. Why on earth, like, what do they do? What do they What do they do with the people once they get them on those things? And they, they blend them into blood and then spray them on everything. 
It's like really, really fucked up. Oh, we got a Ooh. webcam HD. It looks like we're getting botted. We are. Wow. Yeah, that's right. That's what I say. Robbie always notices on Instagram when someone says like, uh, you know, uh, uh, promote with us or a hundred more followers. I always say, fuck you, pay me. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> fuck you, pay. Yo, how do we get rid of this? Oh, my God. All right. Hold on. Ballad. Ballad, I'm making you a mod, and I want you to boot this boot this mother effer. Hold on one second. I'm deputizing Ballad real quick. I did this with Rue once. Totally worked. Um, well, Look at that. There we are. He's been deputized in sinful celluloid as well. Yeah. Ballad's um, the go-to. For he is the go-to. Um, Amy, Amy brought it back from place. overdrive. A quite well, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, definitely. This is true. Hold on one second. I'm gonna. Here you go. Let's fix this right now. Uh, boom! There he is. All right, ballad. You awesome. now have the ability to do that. I think he already did it. It says message deleted by Oh, Rue did it. Well now you now I have both. Thanks, Rue. I didn't see you were there. Yes. This the quiet earth. I've never seen the quiet earth. Oh. I have not seen it. It's good stuff. What's up, Pete? Pete says two thousand one Space Odyssey. I recently learned I found there was this really cool clip about with Stanley Kubrick discussing the whatchamacallit, the end of the so film sure. and what it's really about. It's pretty interesting. Thank you, sir. I didn't see that Rue was in the chat. What's up, Rue Morg? Um, yeah, A Quiet Place. That was, yeah, it's aliens and they're invading and stuff, but... Split second. Never seen it. What? What? With Wrecker Hauer? Nope. You never saw Split Second. I love how you're saying that to me, but you've never seen Supernova. No one saw fucking Supernova. It's a fucking so I bomb. Didn't see so? Split Second. Oh, oh yes. Enemy Mind. All right. Enemy Mind is just an it, outer space film, but it's really good. It's Actually, the fight ones in space. I got to tell you, Enemy Mind was I just, I recently revisited it. I hadn't seen it in years and it just uh -huh. holds up so well. It's such a good film. It's like it's pretty much one of the most perfect outer space films ever made. I really I really believe that. It's really really good. When was the last time you watched that? Really great. Um when I was like 12. Louis Grasso Jr. friggin amazing amazing performance. What's up, bro? Uh... I'm yeah, sorry, District I'm, still, Nine. I'm still processing fucking you don't know what split second is. I never heard of it. I oh, fuck you. Oh my god. <laughs> He's so offended. I am so mad. I could be more you know what? You know what? Fucking Starship <laughs> Troopers. Oh <laughs> hell yeah, dude. Starship yeah, Troopers. Starship How did we not say that one? Because I was too busy listening to your bullshit. You, you know, heard of? I wish we got a whole there's a whole bunch of movies, Starship Trooper movies, but we never got like a proper studio follow up sequel. And I wish we did. I wish that they put all the money into just doing a follow up sequel. I mean, there's so many places you could have gone with that. And yes, yeah. it's supposed to be like a farce parody of like fascism and whatnot. But, like, if you want to just look at it from the top, most candy-coated outer layer of just, you know, whatever, then it totally works. It's totally great, in my opinion. I agree. I did that movie. Yeah. All right. Hold up. What am I looking at? Split second. Um, the poster actually does look a little familiar to me. It should. Huh. There's the alien. Okay, so what's it about? It's a ba Kid bounty Cattrall. hunter movie? Yeah. Um, 
he's I forget what he is, but he's teamed up with another cop, and there's this alien creature that he's hunting. Kim Cattrall's on it. She's got a, the sides of her head shaved because this is like right after um, Star Trek Six: Undiscovered Country. Hmm. It's raining. It's ugly. They would like Blade Runner meets Alien. That's what Split Second is. Pete is saying that the sequel to E.T. was supposed to be a horror film. I have never heard that. Is that uh, true? Nor, I've never heard that either. Man, what would that look like? I, I Okay, so here's what it would be. I'll tell you what it would be. It would be an E.T. invasion. They're super pissed about how their the E.T. was treated and all the other little whatever the fuck you want to call those things. Um, friggin' invade Earth, and it turns into War of the Worlds. So it's War of the Worlds, but with little ET creatures. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. 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 I'm intrigued. Yeah, me too. Event Horizon. Great film, which we Power were supposed Reason. to get. Our we, in space. We were supposed to get uh, the full version of it, <coughs> and they just could not track down the elements, which is so sad to me, truly, because, I mean, that's like one of those, that's one of those films where everybody is, you know, it's revered, you know? Oh, here we go. So, so... Ballad says, I read some Reddit theory about signs, aliens that are demons exiled to hell. Huh. Interesting. For humans, hell is a wasteland inundated with fire populated by demons that live in harmony with fire who may torment us. For aliens, hell is a land inundated with water. Whoa. That works. Interesting. That works for me. I like. Daniel oh. Hold on. Um, Amy, yes. Kim Cattrall is in split second. And she's awesome as she always is. Hmm. Let's see. Um, during production, Starship Star Troopers Six. had working title Bug Hunt at Outpost 9. They decided to add the names and trappings from Helen Henlin's novel. Yeah. That was a smart move. The novel is way Good different. Ball, Daniel. Yeah. There's a there's a CGI TV show that was from the 90s, I think, and that in and of itself was more accurate to the novel, which features other aliens besides the bugs. Yes, yeah, Screamers. Wow. That's a good screamers one. Screamers is really great. Saw that, not... in the, saw that in the theater. I never saw it again, but I dug that. Jennifer Rubin and Peter Weller. Holds, yes. Peter Weller's really great in it. Holds up yeah. really well. They smoke cigarettes. That, yo, Indep how can we not, how can we forget about Independence Day? Like, just. It's forgettable. <laughs> no, it's, it's so great. Oh, my God. Oh. How, what was last time? It's such a 90s film, too. It's so, like. It's such a '90s film, and it and it got a sequel. You know, there was this trend it took forever to get the sequel. And the sequel is a piece of shit. Yeah, but there's a trend of taking movies from the mid '90s and giving them a follow up sequel, like 30 years later or 20 years later. It's like really friggin' weird. I love and Mars Attacks. Cheap, cheap IP. I did not like Mars Attacks. I was disappointed by it. I, I just you know, get into it. I need to re. I, that was a staple for me growing up. I really need to revisit it, and it's been I need many, to many revisit years. It just to give it another chance. Let me. Yeah. Um, um. Yeah. No. Planet of, Planet of the Vampires is is certainly on the list. We did touch on it a couple of times. Um, I. You know. I wish that we can include it because it's not horror per se, but Planet of the Apes is absolutely space horror adjacent, if not for. The horrifying notion of returning to your planet and realizing that you're 3,000 years in the future and that everything is gone. That know? ending turns it into a horror movie. Yeah, that kind That ending, of. just like the ending of Seven, turns it into a horror movie, if nothing else does. It's funny how people don't think of Seven as a horror film, but it it's really a is. It's horror film. It really, 100%. really is. But no, everybody thinks of it as like a, a thriller. But, you know, what is a thriller under another name but horror, right? Uh, 
Yeah. Yeah, Rue, I mean, we, we mentioned they live for sure. It's there. Oh, hell yeah. Um, Solaris. Yes uh, and no. no. Is that okay. the one where they're the remake on this... with George? Well, I'm talking about the remake with George, with George Clooney? Clooney. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Yes, V. Oh, my God. V. Okay, Fuck first yeah. of all, I have to tell you something. They oh. did. They did. Wait, wait. Where's V? Um, They did <laughs> Planet of the Gapes. <laughs> That's that a different movie. <laughs> That's a different movie. Planet of the Games is a different movie. <laughs> and it is a horror film. <laughs> Yo, V Darian Kane is in that. Um, V is really great. And it got a it got like a follow-up slash remake requel TV show. Um why did, what a dude, it was great. It was great. And they never finished it. And I was really, it really sucked. upset. That's why they didn't finish no, it. No, I enjoyed it. You, I really, okay. really enjoyed it. Okay, hard stance on this. They were really scary. Fucking brilliant. Final Battle was pretty good. Yeah, I like Final Battle. Piece of shit. Yeah, Final Battle's the best one. Final Battle by far was the best one. I agree on that. It was so lackluster. It was written. What? Final Battle? Yes. No, Final Battle was good, dude. I didn't say it was I didn't say it wasn't good, but it's not the best. B is B is better than B the Final Battle. Final battle was rushed, and he didn't even get to do what he wanted to do, so he didn't even do it. I want to see, like, a straight, like, who do you put V, whose hands do you put V, and then have them do a, like, a really great remake, like. I wouldn't let anybody fucking touch it. I would never let anybody fucking touch it. Ridley Scott or the guy who just did Dune and Blade Runner 2049. Fuck no. Yeah, give him V. Give it, him. Give, him give it to him. Give it to him. He could not. First of all, <laughs> he could not relate to the whole. Here's the thing with him. I like him for what he does, but I wouldn't give him something like B. He's not an action guy. He's too abstract. He's too artsy. I wouldn't give him fucking B. No fucking way. Kenneth Johnson is the only person who should do B. And it's been done. So let him do some sort of you can you can update it. You could re redo it. Don't want to update it. It needs to not be updated. It needs to keep the whole okay, here's how I'm gonna liken it. It needs to keep the whole theme of reflection of Nazism in it with the Jews. So in which case we have to sort of kind of make it period because we're getting very far away from World War II. Hmm. And you know you have to yeah. keep it period. In the same way, if you remade Jaws, you have to keep it period. You update Jaws, you lose the Indianapolis speech. You which couldn't is tell Jaws today. The heart. You know, that is the heart. That thing. I agree. But why is it the heart? Why is it the heart? It's the heart because it, because it is it is the the one point in the movie. Yes, you have Brody's family and all these other things, but that little moment is the part that makes it fucking real it's personal and it's real and that's the part where you have to sit there and go okay take this seriously but it also it also turns the story on its head because suddenly we're we we it it's revealed to us that quint is a little bit insane or it shows the insanity of quint because what does He's he say Right, but what does he say at the end? It turns into it essentially turns into a Moby Dick is what it does you know, with the shark. I'll never put on a life jacket again. Right. He says I'll never put on a life jacket again. So when they when the when the shark starts ramming them and they starts to realize that they are like probably gonna get into the water, he doesn't care about either either Brody or Matt Hooper and he's like he smashes the communications. He goes, We're going to take the shark down or we're gonna die doing it. And he's just in it. And that yeah. story, that story is what informs those motivations. Absolutely. Ballad said, Ballad said, Ballad loves talking about Mike Flanagan. I'd really yes, love to does. make a horror movie in the Star Wars universe. That's what Mike Flanagan said. I'm down. I'll watch that. I would definitely watch that. Check out the book. <laughs> v, the second generation sequel to the original min- miniseries ignores it, the I final battle. It. Hmm. Um, they did a novel with zombies in the Star Wars universe. I never heard that. That's crazy. 
I'd be interested to hear how that goes. Do I believe Travis Walton's story? Travis Walton's the guy from Fire in the Sky who he's like a lumberjack or something who gets abducted. And again, the story is what, what's so scary. And the film is very much, it's more about, it's more a PTSD film than anything else in a way. I and we get to, I you know, that. we can like, we relive what he goes through and like we see his experiences. Do I believe him? I mean, I don't know. Like, here's the thing about like that, that basically what you're saying is, do you believe in aliens? And do I, do you believe that aliens have come here? Here's the bottom truth about aliens. If you, be, if you believe in math, if you believe in statistics and how many billions of planets or st stars, whatever the hell, everything that's out there, statistically, it would be impossible for there not to be life just like us somewhere else in the universe or the galaxies of which the universes are in, right? So on some statistical level, there has to be life. Then within within that probability, how what is the chances that that life can then travel from wherever they are to us? And would we have met them? Would we know them? Would they be so advanced that they wouldn't even want to let us know that we're here? And to that, I would simply say this: like, doesn't can an ant process what a human being is? But yet, human beings live among ants. So if a cre if a creature could come from the other side of the galaxy and have that kind of technology, then it's very possible that we might be ants to said creature and we might not even notice that they're here. So is Travis is Travis's story possible? Yeah, I, I, it's possible. Um, do I think he's lying? I mean, I honestly, I the truth is, I just don't know. I don't know. Um, I do believe in aliens, though, based on that. You know, just that log logical statistics, you know, would would dictate that aliens have to exist on some level, you know? Exactly. I believe, it. you know, I believe in him like I believe in, you know, magic, all that stuff. You know what I mean? I, hmm. I give everything a fair a fair shake. You know? Well, that's the isn't that the best part of the Thor movie where he's like yours, uh, our science is your magic or something yeah something like that which, which i is, think it... i mean well that's how i that's how i choose to look at because i don't believe in a god per se yeah you know i'm well versed in... well you just went you just got muted you're on mute i think you muted your did you press the m button by accident i can't hear you at all can you guys hear Chris? Chris, say test one, two, three or something. You can hear me. Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. Yeah, he can hear me. Can you guys, do you guys hear Chris right now? Am I the only one? Waiting for a response. Um, yeah, Droid says he can't hear you. Did something get disconnected, possibly? Yeah, Riot Stickers can't hear you. Yeah, Amy can't hear you. Daniel can't hear you. Huh. It's like it just cut out. I, I can't hear. Hold on, let me see what happens when I hide you from the stream real quick. All right, one, two, three. Let's bring him back in. Hello. All right. Chris, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna boot you super quick. Come right back in. Ready? I'm gonna kick you. One second. Come back in. Wait. Oh, there you are. I just heard you. Hello? Oh, he's gone. Shit. All right. He'll come back in two seconds. Um, and we'll hear uh, what he was gonna say. Um. We have to do an aquatic horror at some point. Yes, the uh, the black hole and tidal wave scenes are very scary in, are very scary in, whatchamacallit, hello. You got me? Yeah. Okay. What were you saying, what were you saying about your belief in higher oh, power? Um, yeah, I don't believe in gods, but in, in reference to what you were saying, yeah. if somebody came from another planet. Yeah. And they had technology that we um, don't have right they're gods to us if we went back in time with our fucking cell phones and playstations and bullshit we're yeah. gods yeah so that's how i choose to look at it 
you know. Yeah. It's just people came. They had shit we didn't have. We, you know, oh my god, we freaked out their gods. Yeah, they might they have been evolved. Stuff. They might have evolved exactly. into something else. Ballad says we tend to posit humanoid characteristics to aliens when they would be completely out of our frame of reference. It's like, imagine trying to explain the internet to an ant. Like, be like, hey, ant, do you? I understand? think you are not being very, very generous to ants, dude. <laughs> I, we you don't know, know. Yeah, but like, it's like kind of like, know. it's kind of like, it's kind of crazy if you think about like, think about it like this too. You are thousands and thousands of times older than an ant like right you are you are you might as well be galactus to an ant you know what i mean and it's just kind of like that the fact that there might be something else out there that's galactus to us is very possible to think that we are at the top of this whatever you know this chain i think is really sort of like egotistical and foolish to believe i think that there i can't tell you what it is but i just don't think we are the be all end all that's what i mean that's really what it comes that's down to that's right um and i was going to say this before we got into that and chris brought it up because me and chris share a fucking brain um <laughs> actually no i was not going to say this one I was, but yes hangar 18 i would agree completely um what i was going to say is apollo 18 Oh, is that um yeah, that's when they go to the moon, right? Yep. And the little yeah. crab creatures and shit. Yeah, that was pretty good. That was that was awesome. pretty good. I enjoyed that a lot. <laughs> um the black hole. Yeah, Chris Ooh. is here. Hello, yeah, Chris. What's up, Chris? Um I need to rewatch a bug's life. I've seen a bug's life very recently. Why about with, it? Why? With my children. Oh, 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 no. He's talking about A Bug's Life is a... No, it's a documentary. Am I right, Ballad? It's a documentary that focuses on macro photography um, in the world of in insects. Um, Robbie says, this is so random, but space horror. I would love to see a horror version of My Favorite Martian with Christopher Lloyd. I mean, we almost kind of got that a little bit in that remake of my favorite martian which was really fun remake that and was continues, yeah and it continues the tv series it like is almost like a sequel to the tv series as well mm. yeah annihilation that oh bear. my god stop it fuck that movie yeah but that oh bear was great yeah the cgi no, was, was terrible oh, but was the bear nothing. was bear was good okay i have to say this because Fuck that movie, dude. That is right up there for me with fucking Babadook. Was it the Just ending? Fuck that movie in the ass. No, the whole fucking movie. The whole three hours. So you didn't like oh the bear. Oh, my God. So you didn't like the I, bear. I hated every second of that movie. Yeah, but what about the period. bear? I don't know the bear. I don't fucking know the bear. The bear. The bear is terrifying. I don't remember. It's all bullshit. You got to oh watch the bear again. No, no I'm not watching watch it. The bear. I can look at a fucking bear anytime, dude. I can watch fucking National Geographic and see Are you trying to tell me that you can't bear it? Ah, uh, fuck that movie so much and everybody who's in it. Even Natalie anybody Portman? Who dare just, you know, I hate Natalie Portman in the first place. So yeah, that movie did not help her cause. I like Natalie Portman. Well, you can like her. She sucks. I like it. You like shit just because I don't like it. No, that's not, you like shit just because I don't like it. No, I just don't like dumb shit. <laughs> I, I, and I don't like dumb shit either. Are yes, we trying? Are you trying oh my to? Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> you, you're like fucking Glenn. I don't like this. It sucks. Oh, it's the greatest thing in the world. No, oh my God, that is not what I'm doing. When I tell you that I like something, it's because I genuinely like it, and I'm not afraid to say so, and I don't care who knows it. <laughs> Fair. That's okay, the fine. truth. That is the truth. <laughs> I'm not afraid to let you know that you have terrible taste sometimes. Okay, I, moving on. <laughs> that's your, you know what? That is a matter of opinion that is <sighs> held only by you. I know, I know. Um, The day the earth stood still. <laughs> oh, what about it. the knowing? <laughs> what about knowing? Oh, that's, a, you know what? There's one shot in, that's, that's interesting. Wait, wait, knowing. Knowing is like, oh, it's not, no, Did it's not the day the please? earth, no, it's, um, well, it's with Nicolas, Nicolas Cage, Cage, and it has to do with uh, aliens, and it's not... No, it's... I don't know. The, the oh. one shot in it where he sees 
the what is it? Is it a comet or whatever? With the, I don't I don't remember. Well, he sees he sees the animals burning. I think that's knowing. Yeah, yeah, no, it is knowing, and that's why I can't watch it. That alone was just I can't deal. And I I've never watched it again. Oh, Ballad is saying the knowing is a solar flare. I thought it, but the fact that he knows is because of aliens or some shit. I like the Ballad knows the knowing. I yeah, I like that Ballad <laughs> knows about the knowing as well because I'm kind of I'm kind of impressed because I saw it one time on Redbox when it came out. <laughs> you know what's not a horror film but should be, and it's a space horror film. Well, first of all, what? Red Red Planet with Val Kilmer and Carrie Ann Moss is is horror adjacent. Because okay. what happens a lot of these a lot of these space movies that don't necessarily have horror elements have horrifying situations in them, like an android turning on you, like an android dog turning on you. Um, Mission to Mars. I'd love to see the horror version of Mister Mi- Mission to Mars, which is actually quite a beautiful film, especially the ending. Um, yeah, that would be nice. That would be really nice. Okay. Um, I saw Gravity was brought up before, and that is a horrifying situation as well. Again, a lot of these situations, horrifying. What about, okay, what about this? Um, freaking, what's the name of the movie? With fucking uh, Ben Affleck, uh, uh, Bruce Willis, uh, uh, Michael Bay. Armageddon. But when they touch down on the comet, they're aliens, and they got a fucking fight them off with the drill so everything that's happening but then add aliens to the plot yes 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 to chris by the way yes jason x does glenn do that um yeah jason x we talked about jason x at the beginning pete the andromeda stream um that was mentioned as well. I've never seen the Andromeda Strain. I have not either. That's that's not that is on my list. We talked about someone brought up the invasion of the body snatchers, but I'm not sure if we spoke about this remake. The invasion, the invasion with Nicole Kidman is We've, actually pretty good. We glossed over it. I do own it. I did like it. We did. But, we did talk about that. Yeah. I wasn't sure. My favorite, though, of all of them would have to be, um, what was it? Um, it was it Body Snatchers, right? Abel Ferrer, 1990. Gabriel Amazon. Yeah, that one's, you know, I feel like it's a bit truncated. Like, I feel like they jump great, like, swaths of plot to make it, fit. like, it feels like a lot was cut out of that film. But it is a good, it's it's a fun like film. Um, so okay, never mind. It was a- aliens in the knowing. They're called the Whisper People. I watch any okay. film depicting natural disasters. Yeah, I mean, Total Recall is a classic. It's not horror, but it's definitely just freaking great. Freaking oh yeah, Village of the Damned. We we got Killer Clowns, Pete. We spoke about that. Village of the Damned is really good. good um, with Mark Hamill was in that as well. Christopher Reeve, Mark Hamill. Yep. That could be I mean, that's due for some sort of reimagining. I'd watch that. Right? Yeah. It's good. Why are you um, so- <laughs> the original is amazing. Yes. I I thought so. Man, everybody's talking about the Andromeda strain. I got to check this out. Oh, you have you have Sphere. Although that's not really horror. That's just, you know, aliens under the water and whatnot. True. The Abyss. The Abyss, which is... Isn't it, The Abyss is somehow connected to Sphere. I don't know if it's because it's Michael Crichton or there's something that connects that to Sphere. I think. I'm not sure. Um, what about, what about films that you would adapt into space horror from just space? Like? I don't know. Mm. Brightburn. Brightburn is kind of like that. 
it's a flat out horror film. So, it is. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a horror film and it's a superhero film all at the same time. Yeah, Prometheus, true, Prometheus. Which is, you know, I I watched it once in the theater. I never saw it again. Maybe I should revisit it. Obviously, we haven't spoken about Alien 3 or Alien Resurrection, which are both really phenomenal sequels that I love I like greatly. Them. I love them. I love Alien Resurrection so much. That's that's pretty much where I get off the train, though. Well, what else is there? I mean, there's. I mean, I like Alien vs. Predator. I like Alien. I like them all, but where I get off, like where, like I think they stop being like like masterpieces is after alien resurrection i think it's a really good example you know no, that fair. french that french director is awesome uh what's his yes name? he did delicatessen he did micmacs he did city of lost children delicatessen city of lost children yeah Do you remember the director oh, God, no. jean um, jean louise something <laughs> And he uses that guy. He uses that guy in in every film. The guy who's in the wheelchair in Alien Resurrection. He survives at the end. He yeah, it. yeah. He's in everything. The fourth kind. I did not see the fourth kind. The fourth kind was cool. Um, the fourth. The fourth kind and um, Fire in the Sky are a nice little double feature. I really want to. I have not seen Fire in the Sky in such a long time. Yes, um, Eduardo Sanchez's uh, segment in VHS two is pretty messed up. Ooh, Contamination nineteen eighty. Wow. Um, Invaders from Mars, the uh, Toby Hooper film, the remake from the fifties. That's a good one. That is really great with Nobody James Karen. Nobody ever talks about that either. Nobody, and you know what's funny? We talk about great remakes of the '80s. That is absolutely what happens to Lois Fletcher when she gets eaten by that two-legged thing. You know who designed those creatures? By the way, was um, nope. William Stout for the production designer, of Return of the Living Dead. Living Dead, yep. He designed those crazy mouth creatures. You know. Chris, I have that edition as well, somewhere on a hard drive. And they call it, I forget what they call it, but um, it, it was like, I remember when it came out, it was out on Vimeo. Really, really cool fan edit. <laughs> yeah, for God's sakes, does anybody have a penny? That's right, they need copper in order to fire the guns. They land. They land at that hill. It's it is. It's like nightmare fuel, especially for like a kid. Like that was scary. And then like at the end, you think that it's all over, and then it's just beginning all over again. You know, right? The day of the Triffids. Day of the Triffids. Um, strange invaders. I, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you, I don't know about Strange Invaders, but the first film that I ever saw in the movie theater was Spaced Invaders. Oh, my God. Yeah. I saw it multiple times. What about Wham Bam? Thank you, Spaceman. <laughs> no. Well, you should. Um, yes, it's a real movie. Life. <laughs> Nobody was questioning whether it was a real movie or not. You've clearly been told that in the past, and that was a knee-jerk re reaction. <laughs> no, that was specifically for you. Um, life Force, that's the to That's the, the vampire, the, the alien vampire's life force. It's okay. I know that's like regarded as a classic. For, eh, it was okay. Would you count Arrival, the Charlie Sheen one? Oh, totally. Totally. And that one's freaky deaky, that kid at the end, you know, that his that kid, and we're, he... His legs bend back the other way, and he like runs off. He's like, "Go tell him, I know." Yeah. <laughs> you know, who directed that. No, your boy Dennis, who I can't pronounce his last name. Dennis, Blade Runner, Dune guy. Really? That he yes. directed that movie? Yep. That's really crazy. early, early him. Extraterrestrial. Are you talking about? Is that the Mickey Keating film? No, that's Pod. Maybe I'm thinking yeah. of Pod. That's 
Mickey did a good job with that one. I like. Yeah, I like that one as well. You know what I, I think is some funky little screening. So we were all just kind of in. Um, where the fuck was it? Somewhere way deep into the valley, and it was yeah. it was cold, and it was it was just it was a perfect atmosphere to see that movie. And a lot of a lot of jumps, audience reacted well. It was a good time. You know, um, oh god, what was I just about to say? Oh, you know what I think his best film is? Mickey Heaton's best film is. Hmm. Definitely, um, darling. Who really liked? Really, it. yeah, really liked it a lot. Love that actress. Love that film. Interesting. She's also she's in it. Jug. She's in Jug Face as well. She's in a bunch of stuff. She's in The Woman. Uh, Jack Ketchum's The Woman by Is Lucky that McKee. Paul, Pollyanna McIntosh. No, she plays the daughter that gets knocked up by the dad. Which is never specifically said, but heavily insinu like you know that it's the dad, it's the father. It's so fucked up. That is that is a twisted film. And you know what's funny about that film too? It's funny how like like people don't realize that's a feminist film. Like it's very, very feminist film. And people are like, No, oh, it's like misogynistic. Like you gotta watch it through a feminist perspective to like understand what that movie is doing. It's a brilliant film. The woman. Check that out. Lucky McKee's The Woman, uh, based on Jack Ketchum's uh, book, or Jack Ketchum's characters, maybe? I don't yeah. know. Yes. But yeah, it's did. good stuff. It's good. He did Life Force. That's right. Um, I did, Toby Hooper directed Dancing With Myself music video. That's crazy. Oh, boy. The, X, the X-Files, Fight for the Future. Okay. X-Files always counts as space horror. So Daniel disagrees. He says that David Twahi, or whatever this is, directed The Arrival. He also directed Pitch Black. It was not Dennis whatever. And we're talking about a different one? Let me check. You're talking about Charlie Sheen film. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, I guess that was not directed by him. Let me double check. You double check that. Because I might have gone to... Well, the title is right, and the director is right, but it uh-huh. may be... Um, the wrong one. Yeah, I'm talking about. Yes, indeedy. Yeah, it is. It's the wrong one. I'm talking about. Um, I'm. I'm talking about Charlie Sheen because yeah. that's the one that I think of. But it's the other one, Amy uh, Adams. That I never saw. Oh, Arrival. Amy Adams and Jeremy Renner. That's because it doesn't have the in the title. It's just Arrival. Ooh. So yes. So I stand corrected. Actually, the aliens in Arrival are really great looking and really yeah. freaky, like really yes, freaky. And it's not a horror film at all, but like the aliens are so scary and like like bizarre and like to use the adjective alien, they are so alien that like they're so non-human that it's just really freaky. True. The Puppet Masters, nineteen ninety six. Oh my it. god! Wow. There's something people don't oh. talk about. That's a good one. <laughs> what about Doll Man? <laughs> wow. 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 No. Doll Man. Poor Tim Thomerson. Fucking, fucking The Hidden with, uh, what's his face? Yes. Really yes. solid yes. alien yes. film. Just excellent. I got to see that on the big screen. That played at my Alamo. That's I was so glad film. to see it. Yeah. Um, Check out The Hidden if you get a chance, guys. Really, It's really, really good. Kyle really McLaughlin. Good. Yeah, Norris. Kyle McGo- McLaughlin from uh, Twin Peaks is in it. Yeah. Um, just really, really solid alien film. That's a film that could be updated in a really cool way. I would want to see that. For sure. Um, by the way, we didn't touch on this, but I saw somebody mention... Cabin Fever, like Eli Roth's Cabin Fever in Outer Space. That would be an excellent sequel to do in Outer Space. I'd see that. A flesh-eating uh, virus uh, infects the International Space Station and all the, you know, the all the different nations that are on the space station basically go to war in space uh, to sort of uh, quarantine themselves from those who may or may not have the flesh-eating bacterium. Boom. Make that movie. I would watch it in two seconds. Would you count Silent Running as a horror film? Um, 
kind of on the fence on that one. Yeah, I'm kind of on the fence, too. You know what's great? Um, I don't think it's a horror film, but it's really good alien film. Uh, the Big Nothing. It's kind of like a neo-noir from the 90s, I think. Um, or maybe it's from the early 2000s. It's from the early 2000s. It has, what's his face in it? Um, John Favreau, I think, is in it. Stars in it. And there's like a suitcase. There's an alien guy. I don't that's know. The, that's the sequel we need. Swingers. Yeah. In space. I'll watch that. All right, I guess we already have that. It's called Star Trek, the original series. Let me say, we already have that. It's called fucking Chris Pratt and that girl when they're on the the interstellar boat. Oh, um, Passengers. Passengers. Mm-hmm. I mean, that guy really fucked her over. Jennifer Lawrence. Yeah. Jennifer Lawrence, yeah. I remember. He really fucked her over, man. Um, let's talk about being self-centered. Uh, Daniel. Repo Daniel says man. Repo Man. Of course, yeah, obviously, yeah. with the aliens and whatnot. We were talking about horror soundtracks. We forgot to mention Repo Man. I think somebody might have mentioned it in the comments, but the theme for Repo Man, the Iggy Pop track, friggin' just so good. Dreamcatcher is totally space horror, and King said that when he made Dreamcatcher, he wanted to do for the toilet what Jaws did for the water, and it did not freaking work. I like Dreamcatcher. See, that just now felt like you were just saying that. No, I like it. You really well, like it? I liked it. I like Timothy said you hate King. I, I don't like King as a writer, but I'll watch movies from his stuff when they change it and they make it good and not suck. So, yeah. Mm. Um, it's definitely like space. It. Well, here's the thing. Let, let me explain, though. Yeah. I like the first half once the aliens come in. That movie takes a fucking dive, but that first half is creepy and unsettling and good. I don't even remember. The, I I don't even remember. The, he calls it the shit weasels. I just thought it was like a like a shit caterpillar or something. I don't know. I'm not really. I, I wasn't really sure what the hell I was seeing. Um. Obviously, Predator. We've spoken about predators. Okay, Predators is a straight up space horror film. They're on another planet. They're being hunted. They're on the they're on like a hunting they're like on a home world of the Predators. It's great. That is a phenomenal space horror film. Yeah. Yeah. Truly. Like my favorite of the series, personal favorite. And I talked about how much I love Predator too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So there's that. Mm. I don't remember much about it, but what about Night Flyers? The vampire? Was that one? No, not no the space one. It had um, Night Michael Flyers. Prade from uh, Robin and Sherwood and Catherine Mary Stewart Masterson, which whichever one was it, the long dark hair. I I never saw it. Catherine Mary it. Stewart. It's Catherine Mary Stewart because Mary Stewart Masterson was the one with the short blonde hair. Um, yeah, it's like it's a space horror written by um, what's his fucking face that doesn't know how to write a book. Thank you, Ballad. Um, Thank you, Ballad. Game of Thrones, dude. Which one? The writer. I forget his name right now. I there were two the, writers. The writer. The, the no, there's only one writer. Of the oh, book. Jo- George R. R. Martin. Show. George that R. R. Martin. Fucker. Yeah, Night Flyers. He wrote the book. They made a series a couple of years ago. I have um, never seen see either, either Amityville. I've never Wait, seen what? Amity. I've never seen Amityville series at all. It is on my list. Never watched it. Never interested. We, t- we talked about this. I'm not ha- haunted. Shit doesn't. I'm just not interested. Ghosts don't care. Never saw it. Did you? Of course I did. So what do you like better? That's you like Amityville? Um, I 79... come to watch. Okay, I like them both. Yeah. You know what was you know what was scary to me though? What? Neither of those, but the actual thirty minute in search of about the Amityville horror scared the shit out of me. Really? Leonard Nimoy talking about it for thirty minutes was scarier than two fucking movies. <laughs> That the seek the remake had Ryan Reynolds in it, right? Yeah. In the in the role yeah. of uh, what's his face, Christopherson. Yeah. 
whoever it was. No, Josh Brolin. Josh Brolin, sorry. Um, yeah, man, I don't know. I just never, just did not ever, like, rub me in that kind of way. There was another film. God, what was, I'm trying to remember. There was a film I was just about to say. See, Daniel knows what's up. Which one? I'm trying to remember. It was a it was an alien film. It was one that we have not discussed. I was ta- you know what I was thinking about? I was thinking about how you would put Scream on a on a space station, and that made me think of something else. Yeah, I'm with you, Josh. I just can't get into I can't get into ghost stuff for the most part. It just doesn't. Amityville isn't ghost stuff. It's not ghost mm, stuff. Haunted House. Other. No, Demon Possession, not Haunted House. Yeah. It's a possession film, not a ghost film. Ghost movies kind of suck. That's why 13 Ghosts is so cool, because they did something different. I love the 13 Ghosts film. I, I like, love, so especially the Hell House never did it for me. I mean, I, it's a good film, but it's just like, uh, no, Amityville is not a, it's not a, it's not a ghost story, haunted house kind of thing. It's a demon possession. I'll get to it. One of these 31 days of Halloween, I'll, I'll make that the theme. You know, there are actually 300 other days that you can watch horror movies on. I do. Listen, and I do. I just take off like the month of November. I kind of go light because I go so hard on in October, you know? I just got to, you know, catch up. I like, listen, I'm just, I watch just as much TV as I do films, and I like to catch up on series and stuff. I take a break. It's nice to jump back into series. I'll tell you, there's a new Showtime series that looks absolutely phenomenal. It's called Yellow Jackets, and it's about uh, it's about a girls' soccer team that crash lands in like this the snowy mountains, and it turns into Lord of the Flies with cannibalism. And then it flat it fast forwards. It's got Juliette Lewis, Christina Ricci, and some other actresses. So it's kind of like now and then. With alive, wow, okay. yeah, with Lord of the Flies. I don't know if that ticks your boxes, but for me, it like, I'm oh, curious. check that out. Yeah, I'll watch people eat each other, and I'll tell you something Showtime knows how to do horror, they're so good at. Oh, Chris is amusing himself with his, yeah, old jokes. I just I almost said I'll watch, I'll watch. Um, wait, who's in it again? Christina Ricci, yeah. I was gonna say, like, I'll watch Julian Lewis and Christina Ricci eat, eat each, each other. other. <laughs> <laughs> that actually was pretty funny. I all right, I'll get. All right, I'll give. I will give it to you because that legitimately was funny. That was not some <laughs> corny joke that you were amusing yourself with. That was pretty good. That was pretty good. I'll be here all week. Thank you. He'll be here all week. Um, yeah, I've heard about the new film called Skulls. The new Predator film. I love that it's called Skulls. I have not seen Last Night in Soho yet. I'm really excited to see it. Yeah, I'm down for that. I've heard so many good things from uh, Edgar Wright. Um, scariest thing. Personally, thing's... like on the phone? Said, wait, what? No, I said personally, like on the phone. No. You've heard so many good things from Edgar Wright. No, I wish. That would be awesome. I'd love to talk to him on the phone. He's great, man. He's great on all the podcasts that I watch. Thank you, Pete. Thank you for the support. Pair character yes. exagger- exaggeratedly stretching his arm forward to offer a cup of coffee. I like it. Yeah. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. Um, well, Predator... To the Predator recently film, I think I'm at the bottom of the barrel with these with these alien films. Do you have anything? Yeah, I don't. I think we we went through them all. We really did. We we and managed we about the good ones. We managed in 90 minutes to talk about every single alien film that ever existed in the history of well, cinema. We I think, think of. that we, we can think we've, of. We've discussed. We've discovered a very important thing. What? That Jeff doesn't know what the fuck split second is. Oh he please! Vlog. Oh man, split splice second, right? Splice Thank was you. good. Splice was good. I I don't understand. Did you see splice? I didn't see splice. Splice is or good. Splice or whatever. I didn't see it. Splice it looked is great. Like, I mean, not a judgment. It just it kind of looked like like species knockoff. 
It was a bit. It's. It, there's some definitely some connective tissue to species. Uh, Antlers is has been on my list for so long. Right. I can't wait to see Antlers. It looks you know terrifying. What, you know what Antlers has been for me? The new trick or treat. It's coming. Really? It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Yeah, yeah. That's true. That's <laughs> what it was like with trick or treat. You're you're so yeah. right. For fucking two, two fucking years, years man. Shit. Yeah, you're right. You're you're totally right about that. Um, I definitely want to see antlers though. Real bad. Yeah, I'm um, down for that. We did they a whole discussion about Army of the Dead on this channel, Ballad. Check it out. It was I was defending Zack Snyder and my friend Bob was eviscerating him and we had a good time doing it. I, I enjoyed that movie very much. Army of the Dead? Yeah, it's, it it's fun. I needed. Fucking zombies, you know. It I was fun. People fucking want. I mean, people just like to hate Zack Snyder. The, on this, on this, I agree. I do not understand why people hate on Zack Snyder so much. They give this guy so much shit. He's made so many fucking interesting blockbuster, popcorn, epic fantasy films that totally capture you. Three Hundred is frigging great. The Dawn mm -hmm. of the Dead remake is great. Watchmen is a masterpiece. Yeah, I enjoyed I Man of Steel. I don't mind Batman versus Superman. Like I like what is the problem? Like honestly, what is the problem? The dude entertains in a big way. He's well, like, it's just it's like how they like to hate Michael Bay, same reasons. It's I just this will need never to hate understand that people. either. It's just I, this need to hate certain people because they're overtly commercial. I love that you love Michael Bay. That makes me oh, really yeah. happy. I, I, I pay my 15 bucks. I get what I expect to get. I get a club, be it a strip club or a regular club. I get explosions. I'm entertained for two and a half fucking hours. I get those low angle yeah. arrow shots yeah. where they fall and they have to rise up with the spinning I tracking shot. You know what you're getting, and you're entertained, and it's fun. And you want to know something else, and you want to know something else. People are like, about Michael Bay, they're like, oh, well, let's see him do some, he has no range. He just does these crazy, it's like, oh, why don't you go watch his comedy? It's called Pain and Motherfucking Gain, and it's one yep. of his best films. Yep, I agree. You know, like, and not only that, but bottom line, does he have to? That's like no. saying, well, Martin Scorsese has no range because he only does gangster movies. You're right. He or has Wes nothing Craven has no range because he only did has horror. nothing to prove. He does great. That he, he entertains the shit out of us. Friggin', um, exactly. what's it called? Armageddon, great film. Friggin', yeah. um, oh no, he didn't do Armageddon. That was somebody else. Uh, no, he different didn't director. Armageddon. Different. Nope. Pretty sure it's not. Did not do Armageddon. He did The Rock. But he did not do he Armageddon. Did Armageddon. He did. Are we, are we willing to bet on that? I don't need to. Check no, it. I don't know, bet. man. I generally, I okay, wish I, if I, I don't betting? know. I'm not claiming to know. <laughs> if I knew, if I was certain of it, I would take that bet. I'm not certain. I'm really not. Well, that's not. What I bet think. Is. I think that it, it's a different. That director. is a Michael I'm not Bay sure. film. That is a. Michael it is Bay a Michael Bay film. film. All right. Yes. So. And the Rock. The Rock is, I know, but I wasn't sure about... Um, yes, it is. Nobody does that like Michael Bay. It really feels like a Michael Bay film. Like, well, for sure. Well, it is one, you know. He did Bad Boys, yep. Our Beginning, The Rock, Bad Boys 2, which was just Bad Boys, but now I, you know, I've got a gajillion fucking dollars. So that's a great double feature. A lot bigger. Right. You know, that's a great double feature is Armageddon Twitch. and The Rock. That, that's just yeah. like a, you can't lose with Armageddon and The Rock. Like, you're just going to have a great fucking time. Absolutely. You have a great, oh, you know what I'm thinking of? I always thought that Con Air was the was directed by Michael Bay. Okay, that's the movie. Simon West. Right, but it's Simon very, West. very, it's very well, much it's like a Michael, a Michael Bay, Bay film. film. Well, it's like Jerry Bruckheimer. Yeah. Or Spielberg. They have right. a very specific look, and it doesn't mm -hmm. matter whether they're directing it or not. Mm-hmm. It's got their fingerprints all over it. You're right. Yeah, that was Simon West in Con Air. I, I, but that's the one I was unsure of. You're right. It was Armageddon was Michael Bay. Con Air, for a long time, I thought Con Air was a Michael Bay film. And then one day I looked up the IMDb. I was like, what? That's not Michael Bay? It's so Michael Bay, it kills me. 
And it's not. Yeah. Did he produce it? Maybe he yes, produced he did. it. No, oh, he yeah, did of course it. he did. Yeah. I mean, so there you go. His whole era. That his, explains his era it. Is fucking great. John Cusack. Oh my god! I mean, and the only time you've seen. Um, oh my god! I'm blanking right now. Help me. John no. Malkovich. Yeah, John yeah, Malkovich. Just sigh, Nara. <laughs> oh, let me tell oh you something. God. You know. We, we always talk about Arnold Schwarzenegger. We talk about Bruce Willis. We talk about uh, Sylvester Stallone as being the greatest action stars and blah, blah, blah. But nobody ever seems to dwell on the fact that Nicolas Cage starred in three of the biggest, bestest action films of the 90s, man. You fair, cannot fair, deny fair. fucking Face Off, followed by The Rock, followed by Con Air. What a triple threat that is. No, that is true. That is true. You know what hey, I'm saying? No, I agree with you. I absolutely yeah. agree with you. I was going to say this earlier when we were on that little bit of a tangent on yeah. Jaws. Yeah. You know who wrote the Indianapolis speech? I, I do. I do. It was a combination of, um, what's his face? The actor who plays Quint. and yeah, he, he did the pass at the end, mostly editing. Right. They um they, I forget who else was I forget who else was a part of that, but it was a bunch of them. It was it was Quint. Somebody sorta... wrote the initial draft. Right. And I can't remember who. I think it was it was in the um the original uh Glib draft or however you say his name. Right. The writer who was Yeah, on. Peter Glib. Peter Glib. Um but who the one who gave it the mean the one who made it fucking awesome was was John Milius. Really? Yeah. And then um, basically it was like five pages long. They need to shrink it down. And so on set, our boy took it and just sort of. And, and you know what's crazy? And you know what's crazy? He See, did that. Knows. He did that twice. He did it twice. He did it stinking drunk. And Spielberg was a little upset. And so he begged Spielberg. He goes, please. Please let me do it one more time. Robert Shaw is yeah. his name. Robert Shaw. Robert Shaw goes, please let me take this one more time. He does it bone sober, like the next day or whatever. And he had gotten into a whole thing with um uh what's his fucking name? Who played Matt Hooper? Um uh fucking Richard actor. Dreyfus. Richard, Richard Dreyfus. Dreyfus. He got into a whole thing with Richard Dreyfus as well. But yeah. um he uh he nailed it that second time and they say along with rutger hauer in in blade runner that i mean those are two of the greatest monologues of all time it is so you know what so you know what wait who's who picks next week i do right you do yes so you know what we're you know what we're talking uh, uh, sharks or aquatic car neither okay who did i just bring up uh, milius yeah who are we? What are we talking? What Millie? What's Millius is fucking? Come on. Next week is Conan. Oh right, yeah, he did Conan. I was thinking that because he's the guy who 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 did profit sharing with them, right? Yeah, they all did. Yeah, it yeah, yeah, yeah. He's I didn't know of, that yeah, he, was he kind of made out because his movie <laughs> didn't do well. I got to tell you, though, uh, it kind of blows my mind that I didn't know that he was part of that. You were the one who told me about that. Yeah. And it watch, kind of. Watch the documentary. Watch Milius. Yeah. It's on Amazon Prime. It's fucking great. Okay. I will. I'll Gilbert check that out. shows up and talks on it. I mean, it's. Watch it. Okay. So next week we'll do Conan. Yes. Fine. It shall we be ever, done. We were going to do a horror palette pleasing Conan. Well, we also have to do a Scorsese episode, too, at some point. Yep, and I know we have we have requests for that. We have requests. Look, at see, Daniel knows what's up. I am down for that. I fucking hate it. It's going to be it's going to be good. Um, yeah, dude, you can't go wrong with Nicolas Cage with a cage binge. It's just the best. It's the I best. Agree. I agree. Oh, hey, we didn't even talk about the National Treasures. Yep. Love. I mean, we could just do a whole cage Gone episode in 60 too. Sixty seconds. Yeah, we can actually. Um. All right. Let's let's wrap things up. We will yeah. be back next week. Um. Chris has picked his topic. He wants to do Conan. He's wanted to do that since the beginning. I have homework to yes, you do, do, and I I you promise that I would do this prepared. homework. So I will do it. If that if if this is the episode, then this is the episode. We shall talk about it. Um. So we have a wonderful way of saying goodbye on the show. We say, what do we peace, say? Yes. Peace and hair grease. Peace and hair grease, everybody. Make sure to like, share, subscribe. 
We'll see you next week. Same bat.